And now for this privilege of preaching. Thank you, God, that you've ministered to us this morning through song and you have spoken to our hearts. For you are a wonderful Savior and you are a mighty God. I pray now, God, that you would grant us that anointing that maketh preaching possible. I pray, God, that you would give us a word to the hearts of these, your people. For God, I've studied, but I need your strength prepared. I need your power now. That none of me be seen, but all of you be heard. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. The words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be accepted in thy sight. You are my strength and you are my redeemer. And let the redeemed of the Lord say amen, amen. Can we just give God a to celebrate of just in one of the ways? Give that to God in one of the ways. I always believe I can tell you how to praise him. Because everybody has their own form of praise. But let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If you've been redeemed, come on, let's give God your best. Whatever it is. Whatever it is.
1 Corinthians chapter 11. Let me share verse 23 through 26 in your hearing. I'm happy this morning. First Corinthians 11, 23 through 26. It reads on this watch, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you. That the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. In the same way also he took the cup after supper saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup you proclaim the lord's death until he comes. I want to preach by the aid of the Holy Spirit from the thought, don't miss the message. Don't miss the message. For now, over 2,000 years, the church has been celebrating the Lord's Supper. And in one setting, we talked about how some churches do it on the first Sunday. And that there's really nothing particularly spiritual about the first Sunday or the fourth Sunday. It does not matter if you do it once a month or every Sunday. It doesn't matter if you do it once a quarter. There is nothing holy about the first Sunday of the month. We just choose to do it on the first Sunday in our church. In fact, it would still be the same Lord's Supper if we did it on the third Sunday. Because the time you take it does not have any spiritual significance. Some religious churches believe in something called transubstantiation. And that is the doctrine, my friends, that the body and blood of Jesus chemically becomes what we eat when we take communion. So some who believe in transubstantiation believe that when they take the bread and they take the cup that it turns into the actual body and blood of Jesus Christ. Then there are some religious groups who believe in consubstantiation and that there is some spiritual change in eating the meal. So those who believe in consubstantiation believe that when they eat the bread and drink the cup that there is some type of grace given through the Lord's Supper that they have this connection between taking the bread and the cup that they have grace in, in, in giving while they eat of the table. And so, but we as Protestants, we as Methodists, we as blood washed believers believe that the meal is symbolic. Because the bread and wine 
iron is symbolic of our Lord's body and his blood. In fact, there is no grace given when you eat it because you are not saved if you take communion and you can still go to hell. So it's not grace given through the communion because there is no salvation in taking communion. Let me help somebody this morning. It is symbolic of our Lord's body and blood. And however it is observed, the importance is for those who is involved to always remember what they are doing and why they do it. Because we need to take time to look at that if there is always a message in communion. That there's a message because the meal communion preaches to us. Communion grabs our attention and all ought to keep our focus on why we take the Lord's Supper because every time we gather and take the Lord's Supper we see a particular illustration that is always preached in a message because every time we come around the Lord's table we are preaching the gospel. Every time we put the bread in our mouth every time we drink of the fruit of the vine we demonstrate a sermon Walk with me around this text. First of all, the pain of his sacrifice. Say it again, neighbor. There was a pain in his sacrifice. Look if you will at verse 23 and 24. It says, For I have received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup. And after saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Let me tell you, my friends, my body broken for you. Let me say that again. My body broken for you. Let me say it in the middle section. My body broken for you. When he talks about his broken body, he is referring to the pain that he was destined to suffer on the cross. In fact, the salvation that we enjoy is free, but it is not cheap. Tell your neighbor, it's free, but it ain't cheap. It's because, because, because God sent his son and it cost his son his life. Ah, yeah, it, it, it's not free, but it costs. It, it's, not, it's not a cheap grace. It's, it, it is a salvation that was paid for with a broken body. Friends, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. He was beat. He was spit on. He was mocked. He was stripped naked before his mother. He was nailed to the cross. Nails in his hands. Nails in his feet. Speared in his side. Ah, lied on. Taken from one court to another court. He suffered. He bled. And he died that we might have a right to the tree of life. I dare not come to the Lord's church and come in his presence on the Lord's day and stand around the Lord's table and think that the sacrifice did not cost him something. And I think that's the reason why so many don't really have a divine connection with him because we act like he owed it to us. I think sometimes we miss the mark because some of us believe that he owed us something for dying on the cross. But you know, my friends, again, you will not shout over his majesty of grace until you feel the magnitude of your own guilt. Let me say that again. That that's why church sometimes is quiet. We don't think that we owe God anything. Because if we can, if you can't shout and be and know that we have messed up, know that we have sinned, know that we are not even worthy, know that we should.
should even be here this morning. That's why some folk just feel like they just ought to be here. But no, tell your neighbor, God, no, you don't deserve to be here, and neither do I. But thank God for his... I need to entreat some somebody in here that would be transparent and say, you know what, I'm guilty this morning. I wish I had some trans people here, transparent people in here that'll say, I deserve punishment right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. But when I apply the blood of Jesus, our God does not see me, but he sees the blood. And Jesus covering me and covering you, and then he allows us to even come in his presence. And so lift up your hands, all your gates, be ye lifted up to heaven. And the King of Glory shall come in. Who is this King of Glory? Maybe you don't know who he is. It is the Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Let me tell you once again, he suffered. Yeah, he bled. He died for your sins and for my sins. The just and the unjust, for the righteous and the unrighteous. The text says he gave thanks. Let me put a point right here. That's what the text says. He says, he gave thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Right, and when we come into the house, we should give God thanks. Yeah. I don't know why it's such a text to thank him for a sacrifice. To thank him for his blood. To thank him for dying in our place. To thank him for cleansing us. Because he says he gave thanks. And that is a message that we should not miss because it is him that I might become. And the reality is, is that the message of the pain of his body is that he became what I am, that I might become what he is. Jesus paid it all. And all to him we owe sin and left the crimson of stain. But can I tell somebody who may feel as if that you're still dirty? He washed you. Now, let me preach to somebody who don't feel worthy like me to even be here this morning. He washed you whiter than snow. Let me preach to the deaconess. Let me preach to the trustee. Let me preach to the steward. Let me preach to the choir. Let me preach to the preacher. Let me preach to the congregation who may for our own sake. Let me help you understand, my friend. He didn't have to do it, but aren't you glad that he did? Grant somebody and say, I'm a living testimony that I will give thanks. That's why we come to communion. We come because we owe him a thank you. We owe him a hallelujah. We owe him a glory to God. We owe him a praise because Dying, he saved us. Bearing, I wish I had me a sanctified church. Bearing, he carried our sins away, but rise and he justified and freed us forever. And let me help somebody who may be chained up, bound up. You are free, no longer bound, no more chains holding you. Second. of his sacrifice. Because verse 25 says, in the same way, he also took the cup. After saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And while I was writing this message, the Holy Spirit posed a question to me, was it just enough for Jesus to have just died? Was it just enough for him to have just died? The Holy Spirit said no, because had he just died, we would not be able to experience salvation. Because there were other men 
in who died that day. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Say that. I wish I had me some help this morning. There were two thieves who died the same day. The same hour. On the same hill. They could have easily been the Savior. Because you know there were those around who was already claiming that he was not the Christ. That he was just one of the prophets as it was discussed there whenever he asked the question, who do men say that I, I wish I had a witness? Who do men say that I am? So they really, there were those even at the feet of Jesus who did not believe that he was the son of the living God. So it would not have just been enough for him just to have died because if Jesus would have just died on the cross, that would have been a tragedy. Not only this morning, but for those who 
family, Curtis family, the promise of your sacrifice. Let me close by telling you this, that there was a man named Robert Bruce who was fighting in the Scottish army. Independence from Great Britain. And he was to wear the Scottish crown, but he had to defeat the English. And the battle was going England's way. And Robert Bruce and his men got the upper hand, and so the English decides that they needed to capture Robert so they could discourage his army. So what they did, they went and got Robert's dogs. Cause his dogs knew his scent and his smell. They put his dogs on his trail and they almost had Robert trapped. But Bruce thought of something that, that, they, that could do the dogs. They could hear the dogs barking and the English almost caught him. But Bruce said that I have an idea. So, so Robert decides to run through a stream. And when he ran through the stream of water, the dogs got to the water and lost the smell because the water took the smell away. The dogs were on his trail, but lost his scent. Well, my friends, I'm done when I tell you this, that the verse 26 says, For as often as you drink, and as often as you eat this bread, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. So as the enemies of our soul may be on our track, and I'm sure he was on your track years ago before you came running saying what must I do to be saved and some of us got him on our track right now because we've yet to acknowledge him but the Bible says at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and that every tongue shall confess so some of us we are trapped by dogs barking at us and they know where we are. But let me tell you, I got something for you that money can't buy this morning. I got something to offer you this morning that you can't get off the shelf. You, you, can't, you can't purchase this. I got something to offer you this morning. There is a fountain filled with blood. It's strong from Emmanuel's veins. And sin us plunge beneath that flood. Loose all that guilty stains. Have I got a witness in here? I got something to offer you that, that you can't get from anybody else. And let me offer you this, that there was a dying thief who rejoiced to see that fountain in his day. And there may I, though thou let me, wash all my sins away. Let me help somebody else in here. There was a dying lamb. Yeah, there was a dying lamb. That precious blood shall never lose its power. But let me tell you, ever since by faith, I saw that stream that flow in the wounds of healing side. Maybe that ain't your testimony. But maybe there's somebody in here who got a testimony that'll say, what can
so hard, why you dance so hard. They don't know your story. They don't know what you used to do, where you used to be. And I need to talk to the saved folk that know that even when you are saved, you still mess up. I wish I had somebody in here. But aren't you glad that he died for your sins and for mine? And I don't know if it's you, but don't it kind of make you just wonder sometimes how dirt gonna talk about other dirt? How dirt know your business? Dirt tell all your secrets. But get the hush mouth when it's time for them to be on the stand. They, they ain't never done no wrong. They ain't never, they ain't never cursed. They ain't never slipped up. I wish I had some folk in here. And you know why folk don't like to come to church? Because I'll tell you why. They told me. Those dirt talk about other dirt like they dirt don't stink. I wish I had some help in here. But what would happen if you didn't look at somebody from their mistake? Yeah. But you love them for who they are. The thing about it is that we don't have a hell of a hell to put nobody in and thank God for that. But there's an opportunity today that he extends to all of us 
The quiet reality is, in order for your relationship with Christ to be strengthened, you have to die to yourself daily. We have to acknowledge where we messed up, where we've sinned, where we've fallen. But then while we are acknowledging it, don't stay wallowing in it. Get back up again. Brush yourself off. What is sin? Sin is sin. For all have sin, not y'all have sin, all have sin and have come short of the glory of God. But because of this, we have a perpetuation. Who is the perpetuation for our sins and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world? He died for you and for me. Yeah. And if they said it in my hometown in Blake and Blake they used to say, and if I live right, treat my neighbor. If I walk in the pathway of duty, and I work to the close of the day, they used to say, you know, I shall see the great king in his beauty when I'm gone. The last mile of the way. And what is, whatever your lot is, can you at least just help somebody who may not know the way? And the way that people may not know the way is because they may have never seen the way walk down in front of them. They will know we are Christians by our love. The way we treat them, the way we talk to them, the way we act with them around them, they will know we are saved by the way we treat them. That mother who had a child out of wedlock will know that we are Christians by our love. That father who may not be the best birth, may not be the best family man, may not even be a part of that child's life. They will know we are Christians by our love. That, that mother who may be walking the floor all night long worried about her child who may not even know that they're even in the world because they didn't come home last night. They will know we are Christians by our love. The prostitutes that's in, that's around. The people, they will know we are Christians by our love. We will work with each other. We will walk side by side. They will know it. And you know what? around somebody who know they are Christian than someone who act like a Christian. Because the, the world got enough church folk. We need some more Christians. So if you're not staying, why not join this awesome team? I believe there's some folk that would testify that they had more fun being saved than they had while they wasn't saved. Nothing has to change when you become saved. And you know, some of these folk who, I, they make me sick, God, they make me sick. So, so heavenly minded, no earthly good. Have you ever met a super saved person? <laughs> Am I the only one that they make me, that, that makes sick? I mean, they super saved. <laughs> don't smile, don't have nothing to smile. I mean, don't want that, get that. But you don't have to be like that. Salvation will put a smile on your face. It'll put laughter in your heart. It'll make you love people that you didn't even imagine that you could love. It'll help you to bless those that curse you. Pray for those who despitefully use you. I guarantee you, if you're not saved, this is a great time because why are you trying to pay folk back? Now they, now they ain't your job after you get saved. The Bible says, vengeance is mine. Said the Lord, I will repay. If you're not saved, come on, be, come on, come, I invite you. Just come, just come. Don't worry about who's looking. Don't worry about who's looking. Just come. Give your life to the Lord. Just come. If, second invitation. Let me go, let me give this to you. If you're here today and you're saying, you know what, brother, it's not that I don't know Him, but I strayed away from Him. I strayed.